Let's bring in Pat Forty, who uh, joins us on the program. Good morning, Pat. How are you? Hey, I'm all right, Dan. Happy to be on with the medical experts today. Uh, have you uh, heard anything about the Pac-12 and the Big Ten with what I just mentioned about are they going to be just conference-only games so there's no real uh, travel outside what they normally do? Well, I mean, I think it's definitely under consideration, uh, and that may even be a leaning at this point, but I, I don't think it's a done deal by any stretch. You know, I think everybody's going to at least try to take this to July 1st with hopes of uh, of a full season, and then maybe you're scaling back from there. Uh, you know, I think that, that that people will wait as long as they can before they start stripping down uh, anything that uh, that they're hoping to do. But is it on the table? Yeah, I, I believe both those options are definitely on the table. When you tweet it out, is the first canceled college football game a sign of what's to come? What do you mean by that? Well, yeah, the uh, HBCU uh, game scheduled for Memphis between Jackson State and Tennessee State, uh, September 12th, that's been called off. Uh, They said due to COVID-19 concerns and problems. So is that going to be the first of many? Uh, Are we going to see uh, games dropping by the wayside? And I think maybe especially neutral site kind of games where you're you're not only importing both teams, you're importing both fan bases could be uh, particularly problematic and could be hard to sell tickets for if, if you're allowed to have fans, even in the stadium. So, you know, I think that those kind of games especially could be susceptible to being uh, called off. We'll see, you know, I mean, everybody wants to have the games. They're profitable. Uh, they TV the inventory for sure. But, you know, if, if any games are going to go, those could be the first ones. Yeah, but SEC, it's full steam ahead. How is that? <laughs> well, we'll see. I, they're saying it, and so far they're playing it. You know, I mean, they, they, they've got players on campus and voluntary workouts are going on, and there have been positive tests. I, you know, almost everybody is reporting that they're having some, and, you know, numbers up to, I think it's eight at uh, Kansas State uh, and, you know, similar four, five, six uh, elsewhere. The, the question, I think, then is, okay, what's the appetite? How many is too many? How many of them are serious cases? How many, you know, are there hospitalizations involved? Or, you know, are, are they life-threatening? Or are these just, you know, uh, well, I don't feel very well for two or three days, and then I'm okay. Uh, you know, I think that there's just going to have to be a lot of calibration of decisions, probably school by school, on what the appetite is for, for how many cases you can handle and how many serious cases you can handle. How would you describe Mike Gundy's job status today? Mm, questionable. <laughs> you know, I think that uh, it's it's been a very bad week for him and the revelations yesterday from uh, Alfred Williams by uh, Sharon Sharp uh, about, you know, using racial slurs to work players only throws more logs on the fire. Um, you know, Gundy came out and eventually fell on his sword with a, a very scripted apology that came across rather woodenly uh, on video. Uh, but then he did some more video, apparently, uh, with ESPN that, that was maybe a little bit more candid. Uh, he is He's owning his mistakes regarding the T-shirt. Uh, we'll see what he says about the 1989 incident. He denied it at the time, but there were multiple Colorado players who said it did happen. And, you know, I just talk about how much, how much of an appetite you have for things. Well, how much does Oklahoma State want to put up with for this guy? Well, also, here's the key. Seven and six and eight and five the last two years, that can put you in a tenuous situation if you have this baggage with you. And you can't read a statement if you really want people to feel like this hurts you and it bothers you and you understand, you know, that anybody can write a script for you. And this had to come from the heart. If I'm a player, I'm not buying into any of this from Mike Gundy. Not at all. And I, I, you know, I don't think he's, you know, maybe he's built up enough house credit to stay and survive this, but going seven and six and eight and five, that'll put you in a tenuous situation. Seven and six, eight and five, and two and 13 lifetime against Oklahoma. That, that, that do doesn't it. help either. Yeah. So, yeah, things are trending the wrong way for Coach Mullet. Do you think he'll be fired? Pardon me? Do you think he'll be fired? I. Uh... I, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm look. I, I'm surprised he still has his job given some of the things he's done there. Uh, so it wouldn't put it past me that he keeps it, especially given the fact that they have a weak athletic director, uh, and the administration of the school doesn't seem overly motivated or 
have the stomach to fight Mike Gundy. Uh, he's pretty popular with the fan base, despite, yep. as you said, some declining returns. But uh, I, you know, I, I would say at this point he's going to keep his job. But it wouldn't shock me if he doesn't. I just saw where uh, Zion's lawsuit is now going to be taken out of Florida. Now it's basically a home court advantage in North Carolina. Where are we headed with this lawsuit with Zion and uh, the impact it could have on Duke basketball? Yeah, I think Zion and Duke are both going to skate here probably. As you said, that being thrown out of Florida and into North Carolina is another advantage to give it this. Uh, you know, I think at, at worst case, they settle and this thing goes away. He's never going to get deposed. He's never going to have to answer those questions about what he received to go to Duke or while he was at Duke. Um, but, you know, I think that, that, that his hope is that this whole thing is just going to continue to be uh, legal victories for him and defeats for Gina Ford, and eventually she'll just have to go away without a settlement. But I think at worst case, he will settle. If I would have told you a couple of years ago, uh, Zion, would you be more surprised Zion got paid or he didn't get paid going to college? <laughs> I would always be more surprised he didn't. You know, okay. that, yeah, uh, having, since, since September 2017 when the federal investigation blew up and confirmed everything we thought was going on, I, I'm surprised that any good player goes to school for free. He's Pat Forty, Sports Illustrated senior college sports writer. Uh, UNLV needs a new nickname, new mascot now. Is that right? I, well, yeah, they took down their Rebel statue, and I think there's going to be discussions about whether they will still be called the Rebels. And, I mean, let's be frank, UNLV, I don't even think Las Vegas was a city at the time of the Civil War, so it's not like they were part and parcel of the Southern Heritage or the, the Confederacy, but... They did choose the nickname Rebels. They chose a kind of old-timey, southern, potentially-looking uh, mascot guy. And those are problematic these days. And if you want to just, you know, if, if you're not sure and you want to err on the side of let's not get ourselves into further, you know, uh, political hot water here, let's go ahead and change it. I mean, I don't think, you know, Rebels is some sort of cherished thing at UNLV. The bigger issue will then be what happens at Ole Miss, yep. uh, which is also the Rebels and has quite the uh, tortured racial history. Where are we headed, do you think, with Washington uh, in the NFL? Are, I know Mike Florio has talked about this as kind of a, an initiative, a grassroots, uh, you know, and, and the climate, the timing is right for this, but could you see that happening where that owner caves in and changes the nickname? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's good. I think it's just a tougher and tougher position to maintain. As, as you said, that this was already an unpopular nickname, in the current climate, there's less and less justification for it. And I think you just get to the point of why do you want to keep fighting that fight or why do you want to keep alienating parts of your fan base with that? And I think, you know, you look at the Utah Utes, the Florida State Seminoles, and, and a lot of people with uh, Native American mascots and nicknames. And I think all of them are uh, under renewed pressure to do something about it. Hey, it's great to talk to you and uh, appreciate you making some time for us today. Safe travels, Pat. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Good to hear from you. That's Pat Forty, Sports Illustrated senior college sports writer.